Hi, this is Bo and Stella, and I'm Mikkel. And I'm Ava. I'm Hannah. And I'm Chris. We're, We're the, the Vegetables! <laughs> We are Chris and Hannah Bechtel. We've been married about 17 years and we have four children. Our oldest is Ava, she's 12, Mikkel is 10, Stella is six, and Bo, our little Bo, is four years old. And we love our family of six. Uh, they're crazy, they're fun, and we love doing life together. Part of doing life together is pursuing the call that God's put upon our lives to start a church in uh, Utah. So we're, we're headed off to uh, the South Jordan community and uh, that's one of the fastest growing communities within the state of Utah. Uh, there just happens to be a, a tech boom that's happening. There's families that are there that don't have a life-giving church to be a part of. So they're coming in from other states, moving their families. Maybe they're used to a church, maybe they're looking for a church, and there's not enough churches for the amount of people that are moving in. Sure. And so we wanna be a church that's there and available and ready to meet people where they're at. We don't care about what you look like coming into our doors. Anyone and everyone is welcome. Come as you are, truly but we want to work at the heart and make sure the heart is taken care of. So uh, September of next year, 2020, it's our desire to, to start a church, open up the doors to the South Jordan community, uh, which is a suburb of Salt Lake City. And we're gonna plant a church. The name is Sego Sego. Sego Church. Sego Church is, is our church name, and uh, that name comes from really something significant within Utah. So the, the Sego lily is the state flower, and uh, that flower was discovered by, by the Ute Indians, and then they then passed that on to uh, Mormon settlers and showed them really how, how to use the, the actual bulb of, of that lily as, as a source of food during hard times. And so it really is attached to sustenance and, uh, and life and, and vitality within, within Utah. Yeah, and Sego Church, it's our prayer that it's gonna be a real life-giving place, a place that people walk into and feel something different right away. Sego Church exists to inspire people, to disciple people, and to love people. But we can't do that alone, and we don't want to. That's right. Um, I know Hannah hasn't aged a bit, so praise God for that. Just youthfulness. Actually, you probably can see my grays better from here. Uh, well, they're, they're I, there. Now I can see them. Now I have glasses now, obviously. So that, that that's changed. Yeah, but that was fun. That was fun. Yeah, and we are so man. We the journey has been uh, an absolute blast. Uh, we like to call it a roller coaster. Hannah hates roller coasters, but I she keep coming back. Keeps for coming more. back. It's strap Can't on. Stop it. But uh, but but we are excited to be here, and you can look around the room. We have I know we have friends and uh, people that have supported us, that, that have cheered us on. I have family members that are viewing right now, uh, other friends mm -hmm. in, in different states. That video was produced so we could kind of get the word out and get support rolling and get people praying for us and behind us cheering us on. We landed here. Uh, it'll be December of 2019. Bought a house right in Daybreak by Biscots, and uh, we landed. We didn't know anybody. And now we know all of you. So if, if, if this is your first week here, you are our friends. <laughs> And we need you. We love you. So Yeah, I just want to ask, has anyone ever started a business? Raise your hand if you have. Have you started anything, a business? Okay, a, a good amount, as several of you. So you know a two-year mark is nothing to, um, or it's everything to celebrate, right? When you start a business, if you make it one year, you're feeling pretty good. If you make it two years, you're feeling pretty good. And today we're feeling pretty good about right. what God is doing. And um, maybe you noticed in the video it said September is when we were hoping to launch. Anyone want to take a guess at why we did November instead? COVID. <laughs> COVID. We started, we planted a church. We were able to get launched in the midst of COVID. Um, and with lockdowns and a polarizing political climate, God's church is for people. And he wants people to experience his place of love, his house of hope. And so even with all that crazy stuff going, we started and we're still here today. And there have been days where I thought the roller coaster went for a, like a straight head dive. But we're still here. We're still here. <laughs> and I love, as you, as you saw in that video, there, there was... We shared a little bit of vision, and I would say that the vision, we came with an idea of what Sego was going to be about, 
and God has iterated it, he's changed it, he's tweaked it, he's added to it. And so uh, in, in the best way possible, God has brought the vision to life. Yeah. And I believe God's going to continue just to speak vision into Sego at elements and, again, again, iterations that make us effective here in Utah. So we came from snowy Minnesota. Today feels like Minnesota. It's kind of cold, isn't it, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we came from snowy Minnesota to here, and, and, and we love where God has planted us. We love the people he's, he's called us to reach. And I think today is, is this mix of celebration but also recognizing where we've been, where we're at, and where we're headed and uh, we're excited to share all that with you today. Yes, so we're going to do that. We're going to share a little bit of some stories. I'm going to ask the people that are sharing to come on up. Um, can you clap for people who are sharing? Because sometimes it takes a lot of guts to get up and share. But Seago Church, it exists to inspire people with God's presence, to disciple with God's truth, and then to lead with God's love. And so we wanted to sh have um, a couple people share from their own perspective how is that played out in their lives. And so we have Cass here, and, um, and then we have, there you go, Cass. And then we have Janice and Mylan Novick. And so they're going to share a little bit. I'm going to ask you to just step forward. I'm just going to move this completely, except for your notes. Yeah, there you go. But you, they got to be up here. So Cass is going to share on um, the thing that we talked about and just how, how has Cass been inspired with God's presence? How has the mission of Sego been? Oh, yeah, that's you. I'm, so, I'm all messed up. I really wanted you to go first, though. No. She's going to go last, though. This is how we do things here. We f make it up as we go along. Okay. Okay. Good. I'm excited to be a part of Sego. I see it as a missional church planted here in South Jordan. God is on the move. Mylon and I were transplanted from our home state, Washington, to Utah. Thank you, grandchildren. <laughs> we are retired Assembly of God world missionaries, having served in Asia, the Middle East, and the North Africa with the Sharif Bible Society. We joined the team in 1999 when the modern standard Arabic Bible specifically for Muslims was um, almost near completion. We learned that God's word in one's heart language speaks to the spirit of a person and opens them up to the truths of God's word. That is why Whitcliffe Bible translators are so powerful in their ministry to the world. And they were a part of the team that produced this Sharif Bible. The Holy Spirit knows what our heart language is and what to sp it speaks to us. This brings me to how Sego Church inspires me. One of our first tasks after unpacking our belongings, thank you again, grandchildren, is to find a church. By week three, we had um, traveled around to a couple churches, and Mylan found this one close to us, and even though it was smaller than the ones we'd attended prior to this, uh, we decided to come here. On our way home, I asked Mylan what he thought. His response was, they speak our language. That spoke to my heart, and I knew we had found our church home. I went to present this Bible, this Sharif Bible, that took 20 years of hard work for translators to Pastor Chris and, Han and Pastor Hannah to inspire them that God is on the move, and he has placed them here for such a time as this. Guys, I'm messing everything up today, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> Good morning. 
We are inspired by Sego Church because the eternal word of God is honored here. In the first verse of the Bible, we read, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. How did he do that? In verse 3, we read, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. We find that phrase, then God said, nine different times in the first chapter of the book of Genesis. In the beginning of time, God created the word world by his spoken word. As time went on, his spoken word became the written word, and the Bible was translated into various national languages. And in the fullness of time, the word became flesh. In the book of Galatians, we read, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman. And in the book of John, we read, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The eternal word of God has been revealed to us by his spoken word, his written word, and his living word. And I hear it, and I read it, and I see it alive here at Sego Church. We're excited to be a part of what God is doing at Sego Church until Jesus comes again. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, I'm Cass. Uh, I was actually I am was born and raised here in Utah, and I was also raised LDS slash Mormon. Um, I left that religion almost two years ago, and I became a believer. <laughs> um, with that has come a lot of relearning. I've been deconstructing all the false truths that I was taught and replacing it with the one and only truth that is words God or God's word and only God's word. After a whole year of prayerfully and purposefully seeking out a church to join that my family and I could plant seeds in and grow with, um, a place to call a church family, the Lord brought us to Sego nine months ago. As a newer believer, reading the Bible for the first time, and deconstructing false truths, I had prayed for a church that would only teach from the word of God, a place that could help serve as a strong foundation to continue to build my faith, grow in faith, and help lead others towards Christ. The biggest thing I've enjoyed learning about is who God truly is. Because for me, realizing who Jesus is is essential to under. Sorry. Realizing who Jesus is is essential to understanding what it means to follow him. Every sermon, every teaching at Sego has increased my knowledge and understanding of God's word and the gospel truth. It has provided clarity on areas I was confused and lost in. For example, like I said, um, who God is and salvation, what salvation really is. I trust that anyone teaching at Sego is inspired by God's truth on what they speak on. Listening to the messages taught here straight from God's word week after week has helped me understand uh, that God's word is the ultimate truth and it is unchanging. I know it sounds cheesy, but the truth has truly set me free. God's word is so empowering. Sego sermons, catchphrase. Sego sermons have helped me feel more equipped with all of this understanding. And Sego has always encouraged us to be more than silent spectators. I love how Sego is a church that calls us to action. Um, we have been told to go and make disciples of all the nations. Sego has helped me feel brave to share about Jesus with people in my life. I'm grateful that Sego is a place of biblical Christianity. Sego is strong and Sego is blessed. I am so excited to see Sego continue to grow and bring the truth of Jesus to so many more people. 
Um, I'm grateful that this is a place of biblical truth and knowledge. And I know that if there's anyone else like me who walks in those doors that's lost and confused, this is a safe place to be, full of peace and love and spiritual healing because that's truly what Sego has done for me. Thank you guys so much. I'll take that. Thank you. Um, I think it's, yeah, you can take a seat. Thank you so much. They wanted more clapping, I guess. <laughs> awesome job. I love just hearing the perspectives and um, many of you in the room could share something, hopefully you could share something about how Sego has impacted you. Um, and it's not about Sego, 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 blah, 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 blah. It's about God. It's about the power of God and how he chose a local church. He chooses churches, not just one church, not just this church. He chooses his church, his body, to, to show up in power, in force, for the people in their lives to experience a God that is real, a God that is living. So we are not all about church here. We are not all about Sego here. We are all about the living God, I love how Mylon said it. He, we get to read it. We get to see it. We get to live it. We get to, to be it. And do, do I think church is pretty great? I do. But I think we, being the church, is where it's at. And that's what I hope you walk away with today, even what they shared, that it's, it's not about Sego being this amazing thing. I'm super proud of where Sego's at today. But it's not about any of that, and it's all about how God works through us to bring life to dead places, to bring hope to people in despair, to bring clarity for people in confusion. And that's what we get to be a part here at Sego. So I'm going to ask Chris to come up. Pastor Chris, he's one of my favorites. That's it? How they're going to keep on going. <laughs> All right, the end. One of my favorites, the end. Okay, awesome. Well, hey, man, I, I'm just uh, overwhelmed with, with joy and just, um, just the presence of God is here. And, and that's, that's what we talk about it a lot. Almost every week, we hope we say it every week, is that more than anything else, we hope that you experience the presence of God. Uh, we can be great orators. We can be good people and friendly people and nice people and have great music and great kids ministry and all that stuff, but if we're lacking the presence of God, we're a shell of what God's church intended to be. Uh, God's church should be full of, of people that, that embody his presence, that when you walk in, you encounter his presence through, through broken vessels. We are, we are broken people that, that God chooses to work through, so we don't have it all figured out. We, we have our, our weaknesses and our flaws. We're not going to hide those things, but we, we hope that Jesus in the presence of God comes shining through in all that we do. So pray with me. Heavenly Father, right now, as I talk about you, God, I want to honor you. God, I want to say thank you so much uh, for what you've allowed us to be a part of. And God, for what you're, you're building and establishing in our midst, God, it's way bigger than Chris and Hannah. It's way bigger than Sego. It's about a new work and a fresh work that you're doing in the state of Utah. And again, God, we are honored and privileged to be a part of it. So Lord, I pray that you breathe life into us. God, I pray you, you set our sails on your course. And God, we trust you as, as we move into the unknown. God, we trust you, God, and we celebrate the victory that we have in your son, Jesus. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. Well, hey, as I, as I think about the past few years, and I'm just going to share maybe about 15 minutes. I'm not going not to share long, but I want to share just a little bit of a, um, a history lesson, kind of where we're at today and where we feel God has taken us into the future. But when I think about the past two years, I just, I have a great big thank you. I have a thank you in my mind, in my heart. There are so many people that have contributed to Sego Church in terms of getting us from, from zero to year two. There's so many people. And, and I just want to say thank you. I have an immense amount of gratitude. We have a few people in the room that were a part of our original church plant team. Again, we came here with no one. And God very quickly assembled an amazing team around us people to support us, to, to be a part of the staff and to be key leaders. And, and I am so grateful because, guess what, the beginning years, 
how many know birth is graphic? Birth, birth is a little painful, and, it, and it's, it's graphic, all right? I was surprised the first birth I was a part of, I'm like, wow, that's how that works, okay? That's a little messy. So, so the starting of, of anything new, it's messy, and it's, it's pretty intense. It's not easy. It's painful. And so, I, again, I have an immense amount of gratitude and thankfulness for those who are part of the, the very beginning of Sego because it was messy, and it was not easy, and it was hard work. It was, it was heavy carrying and lots of pushing. And I am so, so grateful uh, for those that, that were a part of that that helped establish the foundation of Seago Church. So we have current uh, uh, staff members, uh, former, former leaders, core, core families, friends, church leaders, family members, school officials, community, community leaders. Uh, I, I honor you today. I sent out about 30 text messages last night. Just thanking people that were that fit into this category that, that helped lay the foundation of Sego, and it's not just a, a, a honorable thing to do; it's the biblical thing to do. We honor the past, honor those that, that have went before us. And, uh, Paul in Romans chapter sixteen, he lists out literally twenty nine different people that were a part of his church planning endeavors that he is thanking by name, and it's it's something very special. And I want to read the first four verses to you. Because I believe that there's a spirit of honor that we see in Paul's writings and his thank yous to specific people that we want to embody as Seago Church. It says this, up on the screen. It's coming. It says this, okay? You can just follow with me. It says this, I commend, I commend to you our sister Fawibi, who is a deacon in the church of Centuri. Century. Welcome her in the Lord as one who is worthy of honor among God's people. Help her in whatever she needs, for she has been helpful to many, and especially to me. Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila, this power couple, my co-workers in the ministry of Christ Jesus. In fact, they once risked their lives for me. I am thankful for them, to them. So when I read this, Paul is, is sharing a large degree of honor, but he is personalizing his journey with planting churches all across the, the, the regions that, that, that God was sending him to. And so it becomes very personal for me. When I say thank you, when I say I want to honor you, it's very personal. I know that there are families that have risked a lot to make Siga work. I know there's, there's, there's key people in, in my life that have given, that have supported Sego that have prayed for us in ways that, that, that I can't account for, but it has brought us here to today. And so we honor because it's very personal for what you've done for us. And that, that is really a, a reflection of how the body of Christ should work. It's not this, the church leaders and then the people. It is, we are intertwined, we are connected, we are doing it together. One, one can't exist with, 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 without the other. And so when we uh, represent the body of Christ, it is this affectionate, honorable way of, of being integrated and it's it's the same playing field we are we are co-laborers doing this together and we honor one another and we show love so just as a way of appreciation can we just clap for those that have went before us that have laid the foundation so thankful for you so when i think about the present when i think about the present i think that we that's my story but you have a story of how jesus has changed you because Jesus was on mission to rescue you from your broken state and bring you into a state of, of stability and sure foundation and identity in Christ. And there's a lot of things, as Cass was sharing, there's a lot of things that we've all had to, to unlearn so that we can learn the right way in terms of how God sees us and views us. But we are on mission because of what Jesus has done for us. And I'll say this, nothing, will be, nothing you do in life will be more important than living on mission for Jesus. Nothing you do in life will be more important than living on mission for Jesus. So your career, your, your finances, your status, your titles, I would say even your family, right? Like these are all things that, that, that encapsulate living on mission for Jesus. But Jesus came, down, came to lay his life down for us. And so there's this aspect of God, I, I lay myself down for others, and it says this in John chapter 4, verse 35. I'm sorry, I, uh, um, I skipped ahead. I, I, I'm going to hold out that, on that thought for a second. I, I skipped ahead, but I just want to say this. Living on mission for Jesus means that we are laying our lives down 
for others. And, and it means that there's a, there's a sacrifice that goes into that. And so what does that mean for us? What is our mission about? Here's what our mission is about. Utah is 3% Christian. Utah is 3% Christian. So that means that there's 90%, 97% of our population, Utah State population, that doesn't know the biblical version of Jesus. We have a massive mission field. Massive mission field. Jesus says this in John chapter 4, verse 35. Don't you have a saying, it is still four months until the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe with harvest. They are, I, if, it was, if it was flipped, if this was 97% Christian, there's, there's really not much of a mission field. There, there, we, we can't look around. We have to look really hard to find harvest fields that, that are ripe for harvest. But the fact that it is 3% Christian, we, it's all around us. The opportunities are endless. The harvest field is overwhelming in the best way possible because it's, it is all around. Like, open your eyes. Would you see it? Would, would, you, would you embrace it? Would you understand it? So the fields are ripe with harvest. And guess what? I'm not a farmer, but I know a, a thing or two about farming. When it's harvest time, it's go time. Because if, if you don't go, you will be wasting your time. And if you waste your time, you waste the harvest. You have a window to, to, to reap what is ripe. And if you don't act effectively and, and, and efficiently, you will waste the harvest that is in front of you, right? That's why farmers, when they, when they are when they're out there cultivating their harvest, they are, it is early mornings and late nights, and they go hard. And it's exhausting. And it's tiring. It's sacrificial because they know that there is a return. We, we, have, to, we have to gather, otherwise we're going to lose it. So I, I feel that in my spirit. Not to say we're going to rush the process of Sego, but there's a sense of urgency that we have to live with. Amen? We have to live with, with a sense of urgency. Otherwise, there is a harvest that, that, that we will lose. And the harvest is attached to bringing people into God's kingdom, into right relationship with Jesus Christ. So I'm going to bring it. I'm going to frame it up for you, okay? I'm going to frame it up. Here's what it means. Sego Church is full of transplants. Now, we've, we've talked about this and joked about this, but... If you are not from here, would you just raise your hand? Okay. Truckload of us. We, we are, I would say that looks like about 70%, maybe 80% of the room is not from here. Okay, I just want to, I want to encourage you and make it super clear. You are not here for your job. You are not here to enjoy your mountains. You are not here for this beautiful landscape. God has sent you here by divine mission. You are on divine assignment. If, if, think about it, practically and then spiritually. Practically, if this is 3% Christian, wouldn't it make sense that God would send people that are Christians to a land that needs him desperately? So you are sent here on mission. Th this is not a place that, that we sit back and enjoy and just like, wow, let's, what, what, what hike can we do? What place can we go to experience God's beauty and creation? That is amazing. But there's people here that need the love of Jesus. And it's in you. So what's in you has to come out of you so that the world around you can experience his love through you. God does his best work through people. I wish we all could get dreams and visions and this, this, this encounter with our Heavenly Father. But more often than not, God, God shows his love through people. So God's going to work in you and then through you to, to be a part of the great harvest in this state. So if you're a transplant, you are here by divine mission. So roll up your sleeves and get to work. Let's go. Let's go. That, that's what God has called us to do. All my transplants say amen. 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 There it is. Okay, okay. My locals, if you, if you are born and raised in Utah, can you just raise your hand? Okay. I would say maybe 10%, okay? Uh, my friends, uh, I am humbled and honored to link arms with you and to continue the work that you've been, you've been doing for, for many, many decades of hard years. You've had to pick stones before others could come in and actually plant some seeds and, and tend to the, to the soil. You've had to do really hard, hard work before any seeds were being thrown or cast. You've had to do that. I'm going to tell you, like, I, 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 again, I am honored to link arms with you. We need you. We need your wisdom. We need your grit. We need your experience. We need your undying love. 
for the people of, of Utah. We need you. So we link arms together. And so d- don't pull back. We, we are not the new kids on the block. We don't have it all figured out. Actually, we have nothing figured out, okay? We don't know who's in order of sharing, right? We're like, oh, I think you're up, right? It's all good. We are learning as quickly as we can, but we, we need your experience. We need your wisdom. We need your love to move us forward. We, we want to continue to link arms. Um, last category, for those that are hurting, for those that are broken, for those that are alone, for those that are searching for truth. For those coming out of the LDS church, you're our why. You're why we're here. And we didn't fully understand that when we made that video three years ago. But you're our why. You're why we're here. And I can't tell you, like, my heart it's like when you have a new kid, your heart just grows in a very infinite way for your children. And, and I feel like that's happening in my life. My heart is growing in affection and love for the people of Utah. And get that out of here. <laughs> and it, thanks, but no thanks. Um, but we are praying for you constantly. And when I say we, I'm, I'm representing Hannah and our staff. Um, you are who God gives me dreams and visions of. When I, when I dream about Sego, I dream with you in mind. I dream with you in mind. I dream about the future. I dream about what we need to do, what we need to establish, what could be, what should be. I dream with you in mind. And, and we're not even close to being done. Again, I feel like we're just getting started, but, but, but that is our heart. That is our why. John 15 verse 13 says this, Jesus speaking, there is no greater love. I wanted to share this earlier. I jumped ahead. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. My prayer is that Siegel Love would operate with with a no greater love burden. That that we would have this no greater love burden. That that there is no greater love than I have than than to lay down my life for for Cass and her family. Than than to lay down my life for for Terry and her family. And and others that have found Siegel, there's no greater love that, that I can have then they come here and say, Jesus, I lay it all, I lay it all on the table, I lay it all down so that those that are searching for you, Jesus, may find you. I lay it all down. No greater love burden. We got to have this no greater love burden if we're going to accomplish the things that God has asked us to do. We had a neighbor friend who fits in this last category uh, over the other night was with Jeff and Allie, and we had great conversations, but he is searching for the truth. His heart is open, but it's been wounded. It's been betrayed, it's been, it's been used and abused, and he is searching for the truth, but it's like he's open, but he's not, right? And I pray, I pray for my friend. I love my friend. And, and I want him to, to someday walk into this place and not experience any of this, but experience all of Jesus, right? Because that's what's going to change the hardness and the hurt and the brokenness. That's what's going to happen. It's Jesus through us, not us. Jesus through us. And so we all have people that God has placed us in proximity with that desperately need to experience the love of Jesus and the no greater love mentality that Jesus has come here for and given us to operate with. So the future, the future, we have victory in Jesus' name. That's when I think about the future, I think about the victory that we have in Jesus' name. And that is our 2023 theme. We're just going to tease it out every year at this time because we're so close to the actual new year as we celebrate our birthday. Our theme for 2023 is victory. It's victory. I'm going to have Hannah come on up. It's victory. And I'll, I'll tell you what, here's one thing about victory. Uh, it's, it's, about, it's about what has already been done for us. We have victory because Jesus has won the victory for us. Hannah, where'd you go? There she is. Um, <laughs> don't leave me. Uh, we, ha- we have victory because of what Jesus has done for us. And here's the reality, because we've lived in it. We've experienced it. You have, I have, Sego has. There's battles all around us. We're doing a series on warfare, spiritual warfare. We are, we are on the battlefield. No matter where you live, if you're watching online, my friends, family, we love you. You are on a battlefield. And, and when you're on the battlefield, you're going to win some and you're going to lose some. We've won some battles and we've lost some battles. Extremely painful battles, right? But guess what? The victory has already been won. The, the war 
has been won because of what Jesus has done for us. So I can lose a battle and not be defeated. I can lose a battle and walk into the next battle and say, you know what? That wasn't enjoyable. But let's step into the new battle and let's, let's have a sense of victory because Jesus has walked us into every battle with a sense of victory. And so uh, part, of, part of what we're doing, Hannah, can you just come around here? Yeah, turn around. I know, just look at her back. Only her back, okay? Just, just her back, right? Just her back. <laughs> Draw attention to it by doing that, right? Um, can you turn around again, please? I told you you were going to be my prop. So when you think about this logo, there is, th this is a, a victor's wreath. It's up there on the screen as well. This is a victor's wreath, and you see inspire, disciple, lead. That is our core value, or I'm sorry, uh, part of our mission and purpose right there. Inspire with God's presence, disciple in God's truth, lead with God's love. These three things are the banner over Seago Church, what we want to be about. Okay, you can turn around. But there is a sense of, of victory that we're going to operate with. And, and in, in ancient Greek days, athletes would receive a victor's crown for their accomplishments. And it represented victory. And, and, and kings would, would eventually took on this, this idea of like, hey, we want to have these, these victor's crown because it represents our power and authority and supremacy. We are rulers of it all. And so, so we, we see this, this victor's wreath that, that is encompassing Sego Church. And it's very intentional. We're changing our logo. We're having this as a little iteration. But as we step into this new year of, of life and, and then step into 2023, guess what? Sego Church is encompassed, surrounded in victory. The victory of Jesus. Because that's what Jesus has given us. So why don't we just put it on and, and just act like, you know, we are victors in Jesus Christ. Go ahead, clap. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse, 30, verse 57 says, But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God that our victory is through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's given us the victory. We don't have to fight for it. We don't have to work for it. We don't have to earn it. He's just given it to us. His sons and daughters adopted into his, his lordship, his, his sonship and daughtership, we are given this mentality of victory. And here's, here's how it's played out. I'm going to close with this. Jesus was mocked and ridiculed and given the title King of the Jews. And when the Roman soldiers put that title on Jesus, what did they put on his head? A crown of thorns. Jesus endured mock, mocking in ridicule, and harassment. People thought he was crazy. He had this, this fake crown of thorns. Like, oh, you, you want a real crown? We're going to give you a crown. Crown of thorns. Jesus put on the crown of thorns so that we could put on the crown of victory. We don't have to, we don't have to live in pain, in anguish, in suffering. We process through that with the crown of victory that Jesus has given us. In churches, finding a church, being a part of a church is extremely important um, for a, a variety of practical reasons, but there's also spiritual reasons. And as I think about Sego, I just want to share something with you as we wrap up. Because we're going to choose to operate in victory, there is, there is a covering that you have a choice to come underneath. So when you attach yourself to a local church, you're saying, I believe in who they are, their mission, their vision, and I come underneath their covering spiritually, right? I do that for my house and my kids. Men, men in the church, ladies that, that are helping lead your family with your husbands, like there is a spiritual covering that you are creating as, as people come underneath, your kids come underneath your house, they under, they're underneath your covering, and that's a very real and serious spiritual thing. It's also, it's also in, a, in a church dynamic. So here's my prayer for you, that as you come underneath the covering of Sego Church, that there would be a canopy of victory over your life. That there, there would be just a covering of breakthrough, of even though there's adversity and battles you're going to step into, that, that, that God would create a covering as you come underneath this mantra and the covering of Jesus Christ at Sego Church, that, that you would operate in victory in this year. Amen? So we're going to stand together.
And I want to pray that over you. And I know we have some friends. I actually invited a lot of people to church today. So I got some friends in the room that I'm thankful that they came. This is not a, a anything other than we're just representing who God has called us to be. Thank you for being here and supporting us. But very simply, can you just close your eyes and, and just lift out your hands like you're about to receive something. I want to pray victory over your life. So Heavenly Father, I thank you that victory is not a Sego thing. It's a Jesus thing. And I thank you that, Jesus, we all have equal opportunity to experience the victory that you've given us. What you did on the cross, Jesus, what you did on the grave, and then what you did when you resurrected is a beautiful thing that no other God can, can, can put himself uh, attributed to those things. But, Jesus, you can. You give life you give life abundantly. So in that life that we find in you, Jesus, we choose to operate with victory. So I, I pray for every family. I pray for every individual. Where there has been defeat, Lord, I pray victory. Where there has been illness, I pray health and I pray victory. Where there has been brokenness, Jesus, I pray that you supernaturally mend it together and I pray victory. I pray for every marriage in the room. Lord, I pray for, for all, the, all the disconnects and the hardships and the hard conversations. We all got them as married people. But Lord, I pray that there be a, a supernatural binding together, that these families, that these husbands and wives can, can step into victory, that we are united, a united front moving forward in what God has called us to be and to do. We are victorious. Therefore, our kids and our families get to be victorious. I pray for every young person in the room. I pray for all of our kids. God, we know that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so where, where, where there is death, where there is the enemy speaking lies, where he's trying to steal identity and purpose, Jesus, we speak life and life abundantly. We speak protection, a hedge of protection. We, 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 we speak victory over these children. That they would step into who they are. They would step into their schools, into their neighborhoods with a sense of protection from King Jesus and that victory would be upon them. And Father God, I pray that Sego, that God, this would be a banner year. Marked by your goodness, marked by your love, marked by your victory. And we exist all for your glory and all for your honor. Be glorified, King Jesus, in all that we do. In your precious name, amen and amen. Can we clap for King Jesus? Amen. Amen. This has um, been a great Sunday. It's been a great Sunday celebrating. It's been a great Sunday worshiping. And we were going to end with a certain song. And I'm just not, I just don't think that's the song we're supposed to end with. So um, we're going to end with the first song that we sang, Chain Reaction. Because I think it's a beautiful um, way to describe what Chris just talked about. To be a church, we start chain reaction. So let's get ready, put your hands together. Because of who we are in Christ, we are a new creation. We get to live a life full of joy and hope.
in my world. God do a new thing. In my world, a chain reaction.